Okay, this is what I call the combo number one. Okay, it's sort of like a Chinese dinner. Uh, you're going to have a combination of two things here. When I first look at it, I see that there's a minus sign, but they're not perfect squares. Okay, however, I notice that two goes into here and two goes into there. Okay, and I also notice that uh, once you've taken the 2 times the 25 there, you have R, 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 and here you have 2 times 16 and an R. So that you can see that not only is 2 a common factor, but so is one of the R's. So let's take out the greatest common factor, which is 2R. So whatever I've done more than once, I only have to do once. Everything else goes in the bracket. So from the first term, I'm left with 25R times R. That's 25R squared. From the second term, I've just left with the 16, and I've got a minus sign in between the two. Now, the number one rule in all factoring is to look for a common factor. The number two rule is to check your brackets. Can it be broken up any farther? Well, there is a perfect square, whose square root is 5 times r, and there is a perfect square, whose square root is 16, and there is a minus sign. So on this combo, please make sure that you put down the common factor in your answer box. And you do have an answer box, right? Okay. Um, now what you do is you break this bracket up just the way we did up there. Uh, you do a 5R and a 4, a 5R and a 4, just like the last video. Now we put in opposite signs. And there is your final answer. You must have the common factor still in it. And then this bracket gets broken up into two brackets. So we call it a combination because it's a combination of two types of factoring. Common factoring and difference of squares. And this is the first combination that you will see of two or three different types.